This is the Beretta M9A1. Let's do some shooting. When I go shooting, I always have basic first aid stuff that I carry. Shooting, medical kit, eye protection, and ear protection. Let's get on with the video. Let's talk real quick about this right here. So the M9A1 has a few differences from the previous model M9 and its brother, the M92. One thing you might notice off the bat with the M9A1 is the rail mounted on the full size dust cover right here. Not to mention the front right here on the trigger guard is a lot beefier and squared off as compared to the rounder M92. Now I have a steel target from Shoot Steel. Now that's a armadillo rifle target. It's like a short range rifle target. It's set up about 60 yards away. So it's a little far for pistol ranges. This is the Beretta M9A1. I've got 10 rounds of SMB full metal jackets. Um, just range ammo, nothing fancy. So let's go ahead and see if I can at least get that target. It looks really tiny from here, um, but it, it shouldn't be that big. I'll at least get a couple hits, I'm sure. So let's do some shooting. Close, a little lower. Yeah, see, I got a hit. Two hits, <laughs> all right, two hits out of 10. I was dancing all around it, but yeah, we'll get a little closer for the next 10. This one does have aftermarket grips on it, these G10 grips, which um, I bought this secondhand and I don't have the original set, but to be honest, I like these way better anyways. I have an M92 with the plastic grips, but these G10s feel really good. Right here on the bottom, you can see there's a lanyard loop right on the M9 as well, just like the M92, you have ambidextrous safety and decocker right here. That's gonna drop the hammer. And then when you use that decocker, it also disengages the trigger. All right, so now we're 30 feet away, a little more practical for pistol ranges. There's the armadillo target right there. Feels really good. The very tame recoil, um, it, it feels awesome. Sometimes gotta slow it down. Not really good on my double taps. So, so far the Beretta M9 just feels really cool. It's a really comfortable gun, um, particularly the grip. I mean, this thing, it just, it's a, it's a good handful. This one does have aftermarket G10 grips, but man, it just feels incredible. So I'm gonna go load this up. Let's do another few more mags through this thing. And then we'll talk about it some more. Now the action of the M9 is also a double single action. What that means is that the hammer can be down and you can squeeze the trigger and it'll actually cock the hammer and release it. Once you drop that hammer and then the firearm cycles, the reset is really not bad. The reset is pretty short and then the reset is very close to the breaking point of the trigger as well. And the trigger break is actually pretty crispy. Let me see. See if I can get you guys close up. So here's the let up, here's the take up right here. And then basically just after that take up, it breaks. So it's a very predictable trigger pull, which I like that a lot. And then of course the reset isn't that much further. There's your reset and there's your take up. Reset, take up, break. 
So trigger feels really nice. I don't know what the weight, I don't have a trigger weight uh, scale or gauge, whatever you want to call it, or trigger pull gauge, but it doesn't feel that bad. It, it has a very crispy feel, which I like those triggers. I hate triggers when they just feel muddy. You can't really predict that break. This is not one of them. So that's an excellent feature. So the front sight is fixed and not removable. It's actually molded to the frame. The rear sight is fixed, but of course you can swap this one out. So I'm out at Ted's shooting range right now and they graciously opened a bay for me to shoot at. So huge shout out to Ted's shooting range over in Queen Creek. One important thing I wanna talk about with the M9A1 generation is the magazines that it comes with. And um, these are actually sand resistant magazines. So there's a PVE coating on this magazine as requested by the military um, to prevent sand buildup and clinging. So one issue that they had with the classic Beretta magazines, one issue that they had with the classic Beretta magazines is overseas, you got a lot of sand fouling. So even this one, you get a little sand buildup like right there, um, all around it. So it's not too bad. I mean, it's, I don't shoot it. It's not like on my hip every day out in the desert. It's only when I go shooting out in the desert. So I'm not exposed to that sandy environment at all times, just like our troops would be overseas. So they requested and Breda engineered this magazine, which is a PVE coated magazine, just prevents sand buildup, clinging and all that. For some reason, I still use the classic magazine more when I play with this. I don't know why, it's just habit, I guess. That's it, then it comes apart. Uh, cleaning is very easy. Oops. This is not a captured guide rod, as you can see. So this is a polymer guide rod and recoil spring right there. So just some of the specs that not everybody really cares about, um, including myself, but it is a pretty heavy gun. Um, this gun itself weighs this gun itself weighs 33.9 ounces and has a total length of 8.5 inches. So it's a beefy gun, it's a full size gun, and it's got some weight to it, but that also makes it a very fun to shoot gun. In my opinion, the heavier the gun, the more comfortable it is to shoot. This is an excellent choice for someone that wants to have a first gun that they might carry at a range, something they wanna practice with, uh, something to take out just to go shooting. Of course, it's a little big for concealed carry, but I actually have a couple friends that like to conceal their M9s. So uh, one that comes to mind is the Hungry Handgunner. He conceals his M9A3, which again, that's a big gun, just like this one. I guess if I had to sum up the M9A1 in just a couple words, I would say it's a comfortable shooter. It feels really good in the hands. The recoil is extremely tame. It's a heavy gun, but the weight of the gun, I really feel like helps out with shooting. The heavier the gun, the better it feels. Um, there are a couple upgrades that you can even do to this firearm that might make it even better, um, such as, I mean, even possibly like a tungsten guide rod, stainless guide rod, guide rod something like that. Not that it really matters that much. I just kind of like, I don't like a polymer guide rod. It's not really that it's a bad guide rod. I'm sure it'll last thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds, but I do like upgrading things to metal, I guess. I don't know, call it a problem. I'm fine with that. Everything else though, the capacity, you can buy magazines that have higher capacity as well, more so than just the 15. And I would imagine there's probably extension base plates that you can get for these magazines as well. We have the option to pick up an M9A1. I don't think I'd hesitate. That's all I have for you guys. Um, little quick demo on the M9. It's a really cool gun. It's by no means a new model, but it's new to me. So I figured why not do a video about it? I love it. It's fun to shoot. And if you guys see one, I would highly recommend you pick it up because it's a really nice feeling, nice shooting. And 
well-performing gun. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and to hit the bell notification icon and leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Anything to beat that YouTube algorithm and promote gun content is a good thing. Thank you all so much. I'll talk to you later.